Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This video is a part of the miscellaneous series and in this video we are going to talk about solvers. Solvers is an important part of COMSOL simulation. However, in most of the times we do not touch this particular option and everything is basically done by the default option. In COMSOL, the default options are very robust and those default options are algorithmically chosen by the physics you choose. I mean, if you are choosing laminar flow physics along with say structural mechanics, so based on that it will, it will, it will actually suggest you a particular solver and all the options. So it is recommended that you go ahead with the default option because this is the perfect option and there is an algorithm that recommends this particular option. However, sometimes what happens, we come across different errors and that is why it is important to know about the solvers. At the same time, if we do not know about the solvers, then COMSOL becomes a black box and during writing of your report or manuscript, you may have to talk about the solvers, how exactly you have solved. And because of all this reason, this is essential to know about the solver. So here you can see in the study option, you will get a time dependent solver and there is an option automatically chosen that is direct. And if I right click on this time dependent option, you can see there are two options and those are direct and iterative. And after that you see there are options like fully coupled and segregated. So today we will be talking about this four. I have partially talked about fully coupled and segregated in different models I have uploaded previously. So initially let us complete this two that is fully coupled and segregated. So suppose you have two physics to solve. Say one is your heat transfer and another is your fluid mechanics. So if these two are coupled then we should go for fully coupled. That means the solution of one particular physics is interfered by the solution of the other. So in that particular case, you cannot solve these two equations separately and that is why the need of fully coupled appears. But sometimes what happens, say you are solving for the electric field and from the electric field, whatever Maxwell states you are generating that you have to transfer to the fluid because the fluid will be deformed with the with the application of this Maxwell stress. So in this particular case, we can actually solve for the electric field separately. Then we can calculate the Maxwell stress and that Maxwell stress can be supplied to the fluid flow physics. So in this particular case, we can actually solve the physics separately and here we can go ahead with the segregated model. So it depends on how the physics and the differential equations are posed, whether the differential equations are dependent coupled or those are independent. Based on that, you choose your multiphysics, that means a fluid uh, fully coupled or segregated option. But what we are doing in the background, so whenever we choose few physics, that means we are choosing few equations and we are actually solving those equations and this particular platform is to solve the equations numerically. I have already talked about it. When we are solving an equation numerically, initially what we do, we discretize the equation and the discretization converts the partial differential equation into algebraic equation and we get a set of algebraic equation based on the number of mesh points or grid points. So we will have will have a set of that means many algebraic equation and we have to solve all those algebraic equation together in order to get the solution. This is the outline of numerical methodology and here these two options are to solve for this algebraic set of equations. So in direct what is happening? The set of algebraic equations are solving directly, getting solved directly. So directly means this is not an iterative procedure. In iterative procedure, we actually assume 
the values and then we try to simulate to converge a definite or a particular solution. But in direct solver, if we go here, we don't do this solution iteratively, rather we solve it directly and there are multiple options in the direct solver. We will talk about this uh, solvers in a separate video, but in this particular video, let us learn what are the solvers that comes under direct solver. So, MOMS, Pardiso and this is Pools, Dense Matrix, those four solvers are part of direct solver. So, initially let us also see the iterative solver. So, we disable, enable this option. So, you see in iterative method we have this is GMRES, FGMRES. So, we will be talking about these things briefly in the upcoming videos. But here you have to understand those are iterative method that means we assume some value and then we keep on iterating and the values will keep on changing and we continue the process when the error becomes minimum. So what is the error? Error means if we suppose you have to solve for x, y and z. You have three set of equations. So Instead of doing any matrix method or direct solving, you assume the values for x, y, z and you start cross-checking them with the help of the equation. Now, in every iteration, the, you are assuming new values and modifying that value based on certain numerical approaches. So, you have to keep doing these steps when uh, until you get the accurate value that means the accurate roots of x, y and z. So this is how the iterative process go. But in direct solver what happens, we do not assume any value, we solve it directly and this kind of solutions are basically done by LU decomposition in ComSol. So I thought of showing you some glimpses of LU decomposition. So this is the Wikipedia page for LU decomposition. This is nicely written here. So, in LU decomposition, what do we do? We, div we split a matrix into L and U, where L is the lower triangular matrix and U is the upper triangular matrix. So, you can see initially these are the elements of the 3 by 3 matrix. You can see the elements are given by A11, A12, A13, A21 and up to A33. So, somehow we have to express this particular matrix as a multiplication of lower triangular matrix. This is called lower triangular matrix because if you take a diagonal, only the lower element exists and this is the upper triangular because again you take this diagonal and you see only the upper elements are existing and the lower elements are zero. So, if you can do this some way, then it becomes very easy to solve because you see uh, here, once you multiply it, you will have solution for a particular say x, y or z among this, you will have a solution of x say. So then once you have the solution of x, you replace, you substitute that in the second equation and you will get for the second term that is y value and similarly you can also get the z value. So maybe things are not clear because I am not doing it by hand. However, you, you can go through this LU decomposition method then you can understand it thoroughly. However, this is a direct method of solving that I wanted to convey and I, I feel that this message I can convey to you appropriately. So, Sometimes what happens, you get some error while you choose the direct direct solver and the errors are like this. There is a nice blog in ComSol. So, I will show you that particular blog. That is the solutions. Yeah, this is a this is the blog where it is nicely explained by ComSol itself how exactly the direct and iterative solvers work. So, 
in order to make you understand what they have done they have they have taken a particular problem say this is a problem of a static finite element problem so here you can see what happens there are few springs those are arranged together and they have certain spring constants and we are solving for the motion of this particular body or combination of springs so for this particular case they have actually designed the problem they have certain equations and those equations they try to solve directly and also so this is a kind of direct method and also iter by an iterative method so for that in they have also explained uh, those are the solvers that i have already talked about so that is uh, under direct methods and this is done by lu decomposition which i was talking about so whenever you are going to solve a particular set of equations by lu decomposition or the direct solvers then you may have some issues if the problems are not properly posed so what exactly means by a problem is not properly posed so in order to make you understand that what they have they have taken an example suppose you want to study this particular system now somehow you don't input this particular constant that is k2 so if you don't put it then your degree of freedom will not be made that means I mean you cannot solve it because one value is not supplied so in this particular case you will get an error and the error may also come from some other input error suppose out of this either you don't supply for k1 k2 or k3 or you don't supply for this I mean other inputs that could be the deflection of the spring initial deflection so based on the physical problem actually but if you don't supply anything that is basically required to solve the problem then you will get an error and the error message sometimes look like this they have also explained it that is a fail to find a solution the relative residual is greater than the relative tolerance so this kind of error you will get and the solution will not be converged they have also talked about the iterative methods and they have also shown how the error reduces if you solve for solve with an iterative method so i will put this link into the description box if you go through this blog it will help you a lot and you may you, you may learn about this particular solvers and that again will help you to write your report or manuscript so today i stop here i will be continuing with the solver series and this will be a part of the miscellaneous series itself and i hope those videos will also be helpful so kindly subscribe to our channel and give us more motivation to upload videos thank you